Welcome back to Lakeside Quilt Making Arts. We're here today to make a little bit of progress on our unicorn. And first things first, I need to put up my blockheads. So my blockheads is taking up some of my cutting uh, workspace on my cutting table, uh, which I only have a little bit of area left because I've got all the paraphernalia that I might possibly need for my unicorn all spread out. I didn't put that away in between projects because I have this station here in front of me which i'll show you that on the screen too you guys have seen it but you know it's my workstation for doing smaller projects which i'm able to do if i'm just doing like one block which the block heads is um and or any other sew along but if you're dealing with yardage or anything it's nice to have the bigger table to work work on so i do have a little bit of time today and i'm going to work on the unicorn make a little bit of progress i got to change out the foot on my machine and then figure out how to go around the nose, the mouth and nose of this unicorn putting this netting down. So we'll have to figure out what that looks like together because I don't have any kind of predetermined plan. One step at a time. We're going to do more of that all the way around here. Doesn't it look like this is a bride, like it's a unicorn with a veil? <laughs> It's got a lot of veil right now. See that silk flower petal? I'm thinking it might need to go in the inside of the ear. This, of course, is the part of the ear. Yeah, this would be the part, the furry part, and this would be the inside. Furry, hairy, they don't have fur, do they? Horses have hair. Okay, let's clean things up a little bit. I need to put this back on. This is our darning foot or quilting foot. I have another one coming that I hope will help me to see my needle better. See how this one has a plastic base. The foot is actually plastic. And then there's a place for the needle to go back and forth. It's hard to see where my needle's going with this. So this free motion quilting is awkward. So I'm gonna clean things up. Uh, clear things away so I can just have the unicorn here. Pull, my iron is turned off now, it is off. And gonna have it out of the way so I don't accidentally knock it against something. Unfortunately, my singer uh, feet don't seem to work on this machine. While I'm changing out feet, I'm gonna see if my walking foot goes on this, if I need to buy another one of those. I think that's fine for what we're doing. So my Singer Heavy Duty was at this level and its base didn't seem to come up, I don't think it came up as high as this. And I like this level for my uh, shoulders. It doesn't, you know, my I don't have my shoulders up to my ears trying to work on it, you know. Uh, which I'm afraid might happen if I have things up too high. But I think it's something about how the front of this machine is shaped. It's harder to see underneath there. And so I find myself straining my neck, which is not a good thing for me. Not at all. Um, it's not a good thing for anybody, but as I have expressed, I have some specific issues. So before I get going, I'm going to how to lift this shelf. Before I do that, I want to have a little bit of success first. I'm going to change out my feet and see if this one will fit. Because if not, I need to go ahead and buy one and get it in-house. Because one of the benefits of this machine is it's larger throat space. Okay, I can get that on. Okay, so what I found out is that my uh, singer foot will fit. The problem I'm having is the screw that goes with the machine doesn't really want to fit through that slot very well. It's really awkward. Don't know if it's a size fitting between the singer and the brother or if it's just this is a universal foot that just wasn't made to um, precision the specs weren't precision before I try to put this on again I'm gonna raise the machine when my friend first brought it to me she told me oh you're gonna want that to be raised up and I sat down at it and 
thought, no, this is the right level. This is the level that I use for my singers because it keeps my shoulders away from my ears and, you know, keeps them from being tensioned as I'm holding on to things. I don't want my shoulders up. I don't need any additional tension. You know, she courteously just let me have my piece. And, but she was right. And I think it's because the front of this machine is kind of bulbous. It's kind of sticks out a lot more than my singer did. My singer is more straight up and down. So there's just a line of sight that you can't get from this angle that I could get from on my singer. So I'm going to take it off and I'm going to raise this shelf before I get going. There's always a hiccup, isn't there? All right, let's see if um, this becomes complicated. I got all of my bolts loosened. Of course, my lamp's going to have to go elsewhere now, which is fine. It really wasn't in the best spot there. I'm just going to set it on the drawer. Okay, please, please work. This one is not loose enough. I thought I had all these loosened up already. There we go. Okay. I'm going up two levels. I can see much better much better it's not going to be as nice that it's higher than this because as you guys saw in some of the previous videos it's been nice that it's been flush okay I'm going to tighten these just so they don't um, wiggle loose and dump a machine on my lap oh I did it wrong there we go okay Okay, now let's see if we can't get this to fit the screw in there better. Okay, even though that took forever, there was a lot of lessons learned that will make it easier for next time. And then some of that effort was like a one-time effort, right? I'm not going to have to change the level of this repeatedly. I hope it works out for uh, long-term use, like when you're quilting, that it's not really going to be crunching up the neck muscles because... I can see a whole lot better at this height, and that's that's good. Oh, I gotta get really familiar with what I was doing. I'm couching, kind of couching, but I don't know if you can call it couching when the yarn that you're couching gets completely flattened. <laughs> but that's what I was looking for on the edge. I kind of just want to hint that this is a white horse without painting in painting it in as a white horse excuse me unicorn let me get some lights shed on this All right changing out from my orofil 50 weight what is it? my gray it's 2620 is what i use Can you see that 2620 and 2311 is what i have used some as my white because it's not a stark stark white but it's white um i think it's almost considered a light sand i don't remember the descriptive name but it's number 2311 and the weight is 50. i watched a video earlier about how to get that in there. Oh, it worked. Yep, good. That had been an issue. Plus it's easier to see it now. 
okay, we are threaded. The machine is threaded. The needle is not threaded. Nervous. I haven't done this in a week. I haven't touched it. Maybe not a full week. Feels like forever. Oh, feed dogs have to go down. I think the main thing I need to do is make sure I have an extra bit of this netting, take up some of the slack by bunching it around the yarn. That's going to help to add thickness right there. I feel like I'm kind of going in reverse, going up the nose instead of down the nose. That looked pretty good. Um, let's see if you can see that. Let me put some light on it. That's the area that I just did, but I don't like traveling up so without it being pinned. So I do need to pin it first. I had done that previously. I'd forgotten that I'd done that. And I need to figure out how I'm going to treat this area. If I want this covered up with netting, which I probably do, so it uh, lasts. But I don't know how well that's going to wash, right, even with the netting. I do like that. I do like it, though, having that little reflective horn right there. I should try to stitch through that with the colors that I found putting on top to see what that does before I enclose it under the netting. I think that's probably a good idea. Okay, I'm just going to stitch a little bit of that plastic. I really need the gloves. They make a big difference. It's really pretty outside. I think I need to stop early and so that Zoe and I can get a walk. Okay, I got a 2.5 stitch lengths. And of course, some of that depends on how fast I'm pushing. But really what it's, what's regulating is the speed, I think. How quickly it's going up and down and the speed kind of determines the length of my stitches. I mean, you know, the plastic is stitching fine. I mean, it's taking the needle and the thread just fine. Okay, that's kind of exciting. That, my friends, is stitched plastic. On the outside of the netting, it won't matter. When it starts to degrade, it won't be caught under the netting. We'll see when we get to that. I'm gonna pin that up. Okay, I got it pinned roughly where it all goes. And what I'm not sure about is this whole thing here. I mean, this is part of the ear because the ear comes from, you know, down low. It's not stuck on top of the head. And the horn is, you know, set into the forehead. I'm not quite sure that I'm delineating that there's a forehead behind this horn. And this looks like I'm, like I'm wondering if I should just stop it here and pick it back up here and not have it outlined here. All right, this is a uh, conjunction function. What's your function kind of scenario right here? There's a lot going on. We're going to have to see how this goes. I am going to stitch the um, yarn right here at the base of the horn, but just stitch it, not try to make hair there. And then I'm going to try to delineate a line coming from here as if it's the back side of the horse's, the unicorn's head. 
And then I'm gonna try to reinforce this line that comes from the ear down to here. And so I may have to put in some gray there to um, give that some weight. I don't know, we'll see. And like I said, it is pretty outside, so I don't wanna waste too much time, not waste, I don't want to uh, let too much time pass without going out there. Oh, oh there it is. Um, thought my watch was dead for a second. And I'm going to start, like I said, it's easier to start high and come towards myself. So I'm going to do that. And even though I didn't put my pins in with that being the concept, let me approach. I want to get through this sticky area, you know, where there's just a lot going on before I stop. I want to wake up tomorrow with this part of it figured out already, you know. First thing I do is I just get it um, adhered to the quilt and then I can come back and put the hairs in. I feel like I need a pair of gloves that have a finger or two available. Lesson learned right there. The needle caught the tip of my glove. Okay, it's kind of all couched down. I can make hair now and put it in the direction I want it to go. Okay, that's not too bad. I mean, it's not great at all, but it's, it could be worse. Looks like a bit of a mess, but I think maybe it's a mess I can work with. That's not too bad. I'm making hairs coming out from the top of the head. That's going to give it some sense that there's depth behind that back, that top side of the horn. Okay, makes me feel better. seen it myself I've been looking at it too closely so I've got some work to do here to make this all make sense make it look like an ear I might have to put yarn on the top side coming from down here couch that on from the outside of the netting I think that would make sense I think that'd make a lot of sense I need to flatten that down and that, and then maybe a little bit right there too. Okay. Kind of interesting how it's looking on the back side. It's more like a mule. <laughs> well, for the little bit of time that I had, I made some progress. I moved the needle, as they say, 
which has a little bit of a different meaning when you're moving a needle to move the needle. So what I basically did is created more work to do, which I knew I would be doing, but I was kind of at a um, at a place where I knew I needed to at least get started. Do you ever do that? Like, you know that you need to just jump in so you can just get accustomed to it so it doesn't stay as, so it's not one of those things that's at arm's length the whole time, thinking, oh, I'm going to get back to that. I'm going to get back to that. No, now I feel like I'm committed to it again. Um, that's the thing about switching between projects every day so I can create videos of a variety of things during the week um, is that you you have a disconnect from the last one in order to get thoroughly involved in the current one that you're working on that day. So one of the big questions, of course, is how to handle the ear and um, what to do with the extra netting. Am I going to use it to delineate some shadows? Probably. Do I want to use all of the netting, um, creating some uh, thickness in, if I do that? Uh, thickness in those shaded areas. I'd have to be really creative to do all that, which, you know, I can probably do it. I've got enough space there. It's just netting and thread. It's not, um, it has no opposable thumbs and no brain. And I at least have those things going for me. I have at least the opposable thumbs. <laughs> the brain is sometimes checked out. Okay, so how I'll handle that, I'll be sleeping on that one. Because for now, I'm going to call this done. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Happy stitching. Thank you for spending time with me and encouraging me on this unicorn. My granddaughter, I think I'm going to see her Thursday briefly. I'm going to go ahead and give her the unicorn puzzle. When I went to her birthday party, we didn't give gifts at the party. So I'm giving her her puzzle now. And I think I'm going to take this, if I get more done on it tomorrow, you know, to where it looks like something that won't scare her, <laughs> I think I'll take it to her for her to see it's in the works so that she can better appreciate the fact that it is homemade, that it's being made for her, that it's taking time from me, you know, for her to see that it's not just something I went to the store and bought and put in a package and put a bow on it. I want her to appreciate the creativity that goes into it too. So uh, we'll see. I'll let you know what she thinks if I actually do that. Right now, I'm going to go walk Zoe and then sleep on how to handle the rest of this. Y'all take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.